Hey everybody, in this video, I'm gonna show you how we grind and seal a concrete floor to make it look just like brand new. So this is what the floor looked like before. Now this is what it looks like after we're done. And I'm gonna show you how we do this and make it look like this. Now this concrete floor was in a breezeway and it did have some color in it when we poured the concrete. It has a little bit of tan in it. You can see what it looks like now. It's got all kinds of stains on it, a sheetrock putty, dirt, Everything, uh, everything that got on the surface while they were building this breezeway was left on the surface because the concrete wasn't sealed. So the first thing we do when we do a grind and seal is we lightly buff the surface. And you can see I'm using my, my floor buffer. And under my floor buffer, we're using these diamond pads to kind of lightly grind the surface. And what that's going to do is it's going to help us remove any dirt, any sheetrock putty. If there was a little bit of paint on the surface, it would remove that. And you can see I'm, I'm doing the edges with my little hand grinder. These, these pads, these diamond pads, are kind of like the same pads you would use to, to uh, grind uh, and polish a concrete countertop or even a concrete floor, polish a concrete floor. We're using about a 100 grit diamond. So that's not really aggressive enough to put a lot of scratches in the floor but it's, it's just aggressive enough to help clean it. And it also helps open the, open the pores up in the concrete. So when we do go to seal it with our epoxy, the epoxy is gonna bond really well. So we just have an attachment to go under our floor buffer that we can Velcro those diamond pads to and run it right under our floor buffer. So you can rent one of those and you can get the diamond pads you know i'll have a link for them in the description below you can get those right on amazon but uh this is basically the sequence we use is, is we go in here with this floor buffer get the floor all cleaned up get the surface all cleaned up you know go around the edges with a hand grinder or hand buffer get them all cleaned up and then if whatever the floor buffer doesn't get you can use the little hand grinder and that usually removes any other stains so once we get it all grinded, lightly grinded, and vacuumed up, the next step is we want to make sure we don't have any fine particles of dust on the floor. So we take a little denatured alcohol with a microfiber mop, and we just microfiber mop the whole floor. We usually do this twice. And the denatured alcohol on the microfiber will pick up any little remaining particles of dust that the vacuum didn't get. Because the, the vacuum doesn't remove everything. It does a pretty good job, but there's still going to be some fine dust on this floor. We want to make sure it's perfectly clean before we go to seal it. You can see how easy this is. Now this floor had a little, like a two foot by two foot diamond pattern scored in it. And that's another thing you can do to your concrete floor to help dress it up a little bit to make it look like a finished floor is score a pattern in it. And it's, it's a little bit of a process to do that, but it's not too bad. And you can see Luke's going around removing any of the dust. And he'll do a part of the floor and then he'll clean that pad in the denatured alcohol. Then he'll put it back on and do it again. So now what I'm doing is once we have it all clean, now we're ready for the first coat of epoxy. And I'm using a 100% solids, two-part epoxy, crystal clear epoxy. And that's going to be our base coat. And we're starting on these stairs first. These stairs are, are concrete too. They, uh, they were formed and poured in this circular pattern. So we mix up the epoxy. We've got to get the epoxy out of the bucket. If you don't know anything about epoxy, you don't want to leave epoxy in a bucket. It'll start to heat up and it'll just set up too fast on you. But if you dump it all out of the bucket, then you get a lot more time to work with it. I've got a whole course about working with epoxy guys down in the description where I teach you how to do an epoxy floor so if, if you're interested in learning how to do that you know I would definitely check out that course so as you can see Darren's brushing in the edges Luke is starting to squeegee the epoxy around that's how we spread the epoxy first is with a squeegee I'm getting it dumped out getting it spread out and then once we get the edges done in the Epoxy squeegee it around. We'll go. We'll back roll it with the back with the 18 inch roller. 
But the first thing to do is just get it out and get it spread around. We like to spread it with a squeegee because it's just a little easier to get to get spread and get it more more spread out with a squeegee than it is with a roller. You can you can spread it a little more evenly. And it makes rolling it a lot quicker and faster also. You can see what that epoxy does to the color. It really brings out the color in the concrete. The stairs are just regular. There was no color in the concrete for the stairs. And the floor itself had color in it. So you can see how much of a difference the epoxy does. It really, it really shows you the true colors of what's in the concrete. You can see how where I laid it out in the ribbons, the epoxy, how it kind of soaked into the concrete first. And it's it's leaving those ribbon lines. But now you can see those all go away as as the floor all absorbs, starts absorbing that epoxy. So Luke got it all squeegeed around. I'm going around doing the edges with the roller. He's going to come behind me with a brush and just cut those edges in, make sure those are all perfect. And then once I get done with the little roller, I'll use that 18 inch roller and get it all spread around nice and evenly. I'm going to just roll it any which way back and forth to get it spread. And then I'll do one complete back roll from one side to the other before I'm done to make sure it's spread nice and evenly. Working with epoxy, you know, there's a little learning curve to it. Like I said, I teach you in my course how to do that down in the description. But uh, getting it spread out, getting it spread out evenly is, uh, is a key to making it look really nice and making it look like glass. So once we let that, we let that dry overnight, the epoxy, we come back the next day. And then before we put the top coat on it, and we have to lightly sand it because there's... When you put epoxy down, you're always going to get a little bit of dust that settles in it or maybe some lint from the roller that, that comes off. Even though you try to de-lint the roller, you always get a little bit of lint in the floor. And those leaves you with a few little bumps. So we lightly sand it to get those, those bumps out and the debris out of it before we do the top coat. Then the top coat is going to hide any of the scratches from the sanding. This is just a process that we always do when we do epoxy in a top coat. Our top coat is going to be a polyaspartic. And the polyaspartic is just more, it's more UV resistant. So it won't yellow in the sun like some epoxies do. And it's just more scratch resistant, it's more chemical resistant than an epoxy is. So that's why we use a clear polyaspartic for the top coat. So after Luke got it all sanded he lightly vacuumed it he went over it with a vacuum real quick and then again we're using the denatured alcohol with a microfiber mop here to clean off any little remaining dust particles before we top coat it we like to make sure it's perfectly clean so he's capturing all the dust in the microfiber and he'll, you know, he'll go about halfway and then he'll take that microfiber off the bottom and he'll rinse it out in the denatured alcohol to clean it, put it back on, and then he'll do it again just to keep it nice and clean. So here we are now. We got it all clean. Now we're putting the, the top coat on, the polyaspartic. Now this goes on a lot thinner than the epoxy. This goes on at about 300 square feet a gallon where the epoxy went on at about 100 square feet a gallon. So the total square footage of this, this whole floor here is about 300. So we got about a gallon we're putting down. And this has a little bit longer pot life than the epoxy. So you can leave it in the bucket a little bit longer. You know, we got about 15 or 20 minutes to work with it. So we don't have to completely dump this all right out as long as we keep working steady. Luke's getting all the edges rolled, and then I'm squeegeeing it out. I got my spikes on, so I can walk right back in this stuff. Um, I had my spikes on when I did the epoxy, too. Those are pretty, that's a pretty normal thing to have when you do epoxy is those metal spikes, so you can walk right back into it. And Luke's going to finish squeegeeing this around for me, and he's just trying to spread it out 
as even as he can with a squeegee, completely over the whole floor. And then I'm going to, what I, that's what I call W rolling it. So I'm just rolling it back and forth, getting it spread out as even as I can by my eye. And then once I do that, I'm going to completely back roll the entire floor again going one way to make sure that I have it 100% leveled out, evened out the best I can. All right, so here I go with the back roll, and I start at one end, and I just pull it nice and evenly right to the other side. And then I do it again, and I work my way from one end of the floor to the other. And watch out. Whoop, it's a little slippery. That stuff's really slippery, too, with those metal spikes, so you got to watch out for that. But that's, that's the finished roll right there is that back roll. So I'll just work. Once I get it all spread out, I'll back roll it. Get it nice and even, and then I'm done. I let it sit. So that's it, guys. If you guys like this kind of video, you know, go ahead and down there, smash that like button. I'd appreciate it. That helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. If uh, if you don't know me, my name's Mike Day. I specialize in all kinds of concrete stuff, mostly flat work stuff. So if you haven't subscribed, go down there and hit subscribe now. Hit the little bell notification. I come out with a couple videos a week, and. Again, remember, this is what this floor looked like before we started. It was in pretty rough shape, pretty dull looking. And then this, this right here is what it looked like before we started. And then uh, after we're done, this is the finished product. Thanks, guys.